Okay. Um, we'll talk about agency relationships. Uh, so when we talk about agency relationships, those are business relationships where one person represents another, right? Um, and uh, so on a principal agent relationship, the parties have agreed that the agent will act on behalf of the principal in negotiation, transacting, and, uh, and business with third parties. So a good example of that would be a salesperson working at, for a company to sell products or services. The principal is the company and the agent is the salesperson. The agent is now has the authority to act on behalf of the principal, right? Um, it's a fiduciary relationship. What does fiduciary mean? Yes, Evan. The creation of like a duty to act in someone else's place or uh, for the benefit of the other person. Yes, yes. Uh, basically, you can trust that the person will act in your best interest, right? So if I'm a salesperson for Diego, Diego, Diego is my principal, I sell products for him, I'm going to try to, try to get the best deal. So he, or the, do the, take the best, um, uh, take the right steps so he benefits the most. I'm not just going to give the weight products away for free or for lower than, than, than I should and things like that, right? I'm not going to make any uh, illegal deals and things like that, right? So that's a fiduciary relationship. You can trust that the agent will act in your uh, best interest, right? Um, another example is an employee. I mean, uh, you know, any employer-employee relationship is an agency relationship as well even if you're employed, right? Uh, employees still, and not just salespeople, but an employee in general still acts in, on behalf of the company. If I go, when I bought my drink at Starbucks this morning, uh, the, the, the person that, that delivered the drink to me acted in Starbucks's behalf, right? Uh, they fulfilled my order, right? There are of course a lot of um, um, background things, the, the procedures, the pay, and all that stuff. There's 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 a lot more than just that in the relationship. But the Starbucks employee acts on Starbucks's behalf, right? Um, and also, and then uh, it can also be an employer and independent contractor relationship. What is that? What is an independent contractor? Give me an example of having an independent contractor. <clears throat> Uber driver. Say that again. Uber drivers. Uber drivers are independent contractors. They're, um, most, most of Uber drivers are not employees of Uber. They're independent contractors, right? They're not employed by Uber. They make their own hours. They, have their, they provide their own car. They uh, um, um, are not supervised directly. All they do is they use the Uber app, right? So they're independent contractors. Good example. Are they still representing Uber when you when you get, take an Uber ride? Yeah. Yes. yes, they're still representing Uber. They're, it's still an agency relationship. Diego. Um, for that fiduciary relationship, uh, does that have to be outlined strictly in the contracts that like uh, these agents hold with the people that they're representing, or is that just implied? Uh, it's usually contractual. Okay, yeah. so it has it's, to be strictly out. Like what, what the... Uh... It doesn't have to be, but it is, I mean, some of... Uh, usually when you, do, when you hire an independent contractor, there's a huge contract that goes with that, right? Yeah. Um, I purposely um, said not to use employment or, uh, or independent contractor agreements because they can be very complicated for the assignment that uh, we did, right? Yeah. Um, um, so... Um, uh, but yes, usually everything is outlined um, what authority the agent what has, especially, right? What support the, the principal has to has to provide and so forth. It's, it's a very uh, contractual relationship, right? Even an employee-employee relationship, it's still kind of contractual, although there's no employment contract. It's employment at will, which we'll recover next chapter. But there, it's still a contractual relationship, or it's still outlined what the employee can and cannot do, and what the um, um, principal or the employer needs to provide. Right? Some of it is prescribed by law. Some of it is additional to that. Right? Any questions before I go on? 
So, uh, um, independent contractors, again, there's an agency relationship. It is also a fiduciary relationship. There are payments, the, 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 the payment, there are always payments involved, usually. You would work for free unless you're volunteering, right? That's a different story. But, but what about liability? What do you think happens with liability? When an agent does something, is the principal responsible? in an independent contractor situation. If an Uber driver does something that causes injury to a customer, can Uber be held responsible? Evan? I don't think so, because um, in this case, the independent contractor is operating separately under, like, under their own kind of guise. It's not like, the, it's not the company kind of controlling their every movement or requiring they have certain practices. It's, they're just, they're acting independently. Let's get to Diego, Diego and see what Diego has to say. I would actually say that, like, if someone is chosen to represent another company, the company should do the due diligence to make sure that person won't harm the people they're interacting with. And then, but that doesn't mean Uber can, like, not sue the contractor for what they did. Like, they can probably turn around and contract and sue them for, like, compensatory damages to, like, their brand name or to, like, what the losses that they yes. because of what they did. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that? Yes, Mike. Yeah, I was just thinking about like with Amazon, how they have the contractors to drive the vehicles. Yes. And I watched an inspection on TV where it says if they get to an accident, it's not Amazon's problem, it's actually their problem because that's how they did it. Like there was a big issue with that going on, is what I heard. So I don't know. Uh I'm not familiar with that case, yeah. but that's very interesting. Maybe um uh Amazon um the Alan Amazon delivery. Um uh, people that are not not the right. big Amazon trucks, but the, yeah. sometimes it gets delivered by individuals with their personal cars. That Amazon is not responsible if they have an accident. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, that that could be debatable. And you said there was a case like that. Yeah. It might might be worth looking that up. Yeah. If you want to look it up and then report on it now or maybe next uh, well next week we're not meeting or just email me uh, what okay. you find if you don't find it quickly. Um, let's get one more and I'll tell you what the law says. Yes. For, uh, for for liability, but yeah. they are uh, all uh, responsible for uh, when they hire someone, they, uh, they have the, they are, let's say, they are responsible for uh, when someone enters an Uber car, they don't enter the individual car, they trust the brand. So the brand, uh, when I trust the brand, I say, okay, whatever they do, they do, if the person works with them, I trust their their choice. Yes. So in that case, I think it's all liability, but I know Uber, in order to protect themselves, they say, okay, if you do something, liability is on our behalf. But they also require a lot of uh, insurance for liability, so uh, they kind of have a standard of the minimum that you need to have for work for me. So, uh, the first part that she said, it's absolutely right. Uber is liable for what their drivers do, even though they're independent contractors. There is still liability. You can't contract work out that you're selling uh, and avoid liability, right? Um, let's say I hire somebody to build me a house, right? I hire a general contractor to build me a house. The general contractor now hires a subcontractor to do the roof. And the subcontractor does something wrong that the roof collapses and causes some people injury in the house. I can sue the contractor. I don't have to go to, over uh, to the subcontractor. Most likely, I don't even have a contract with a subcontractor. I only have a contract with a contractor, right? It's the same thing when I get an Uber car. I trust the brand. I'm getting an Uber versus somebody else because I like the brand, because I know they're cheaper, or I know they're quicker, whatever it might be, right? So Uber is responsible, and there have been lawsuits when, when drivers did something, but and they sued Uber. Why is it that people don't sue the driver, but they sue Uber? More money. More money. <laughs> yeah. You can sue the driver all you want. You can win the lawsuit all you want, but the driver won't have the money to pay. But Uber will, right? So that's the principle is responsible for certain things, not everything. Um, uh, it, as long as it's work-related, what the Uber driver does after they clock out doesn't matter but that's the same with employees by the way yeah um so you've got to determine what is employee status can this 
person be an independent contractor or is this person more like an employee? Um, these are the questions that the law asks. How much control can the employer exercise over the details of the work? And let's, we can use Uber as an example. The details of the work, besides using the app and the routing, what else do they decide? Yeah. Time, like time flexibility. So because they are under the of contract, the work cannot say, you know, you have to work at that time, that time. Yeah. So the flexibility yes. it is where they protect themselves with uh, no different yeah. uh, different contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Exactly. The the driver the drivers decide what when they want to work and how much they want to work and what area they want to work. Uber has no control over that, right? Uh, is the worker engaged in an occupation or business distinct from that of the employer? So is the worker doing something else that then the employer does? In the case of Uber, a driver does a driver do something else than what than what Uber does? Transportation. Or is it the same thing? Evan, you were shaking your head. Yes. I thought it was different because they they aren't the ones driving. Like Uber is not the one. Like the people working for that company aren't the ones that are actually driving. They employ other people to drive for them. That's yeah. Uh, you're right. You're right. So Uber is not a transportation company. Uber is an app. It's a portal. They don't provide uh, uh, transportation services. Right. So, yes, in this case, the answer is yes, the work is distinct from that of the employer. Right. Now, if I worked for a um, house cleaning company, you know, house cleaning services. And I'm a house cleaner and they want to pay me as an independent contractor, that would be questionable. Because I'm engaged in the same business. There's they're cleaning houses. That's their business. Right. Um, is the work usually done under in the employer's direction and super uh, or and supervision, or is there no supervision? In the case of Uber, there's no supervision, none at all, right? They don't report to a manager or anything. In the case of a uh, house cleaning services, uh, I'm going out cleaning the houses. Yes, I'm under supervision. They give me my schedule. They tell me which house to go to, how long to stay, what to clean, and everything, right? Um, does the employer supply the tools at the place of work? Yeah. Uber doesn't supply the cars. I don't know if they still do that, but in the past they used to help you lease a car yeah. to drive, but they don't provide you the car. They don't give you the car. Providing it is, may, may, you still have to pay for it. <clears throat> but um, if I'm cleaning houses, the a uh, house cleaning company is going to provide me the supply. I don't have to bring my own supplies, right? Um, for how long is the person employed? Well, you know, you can drive for Uber for years. So that could be questionable. You can be an independent contractor for years for a company, right? Uh, but, you know, it's a combination of these. If only one of them is not okay, then they say, okay, but the rest is... What is the method of payment by time period or the at, at the completion of a job? Very likely, if I work for a housekeeping company as an employee, I get paid hourly. I pay eight hours a day. I work eight hours a day, regardless of how many houses I clean. I get paid twenty-five dollars an hour or whatever, right? But Uber, you get paid by the ride or by miles. I don't know exactly. You know, probably the number of rides and how many miles it is, right? So it's the completion of the job. What degree of skill is required of the worker? Well, you don't really need a lot of skill to be an Uber driver. You need a driver's license, right? Uh, but um, sometimes, you know, um, software engineers can work as independent contractors sometimes, right? Um, who else works as independent contractors who have a lot of skills? Diego? Like people who specialize in like designing websites or writing some type of back code for things. Tech people, unless they constantly work for a company, they would usually be employees. But if it's just one off project, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, you know, like Philip Tran, uh, like, yeah. Uh, so for his business, he would like 
help, I think, build websites and things like that, but there's certain design things that he would handle that he would subcontract. You can, you can subcontract for a one-off job, right? But if they do it regularly for your company, then you would hire them. Yes. Would, like, a content creator or YouTuber be independent? Uh, a YouTuber is usually independent. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. They actually work for themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. They're kind of like a small business. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very good. A very good question. Yes. Musicians and artists are pretty much all independent. Yes. Yeah. Musicians and artists, they're independent. Right. Yeah. Diego. So for the for the terms of like liability, um, so going back to the Amazon thing. Yeah. Sometimes Amazon either uses like private, uh, like not the, not the vans. Yeah, yeah, private cars are delivered. Private cars, or like you, like even us, this like like the postal service, they they contract them to deliver packages. Yes. Yeah. Um. So if like they get into an accident, like the first thing you're gonna see is like you're not gonna see oh they're from Amazon. You're gonna be like oh it's a car that hit me. Yes, or, they like, might oh, not even the say. Postman it. Yeah. hit me. Yeah, yeah. Um, or something like that. So like would. Would finding that out later and then suing Amazon seem to be like you're trying to take advantage of the situation? Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure. Did you find uh, because I, I don't know the detail? You didn't find anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, if you could, and if I'll remember, maybe I'll do it as well. It, it depends on what what the law is, and 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 um, because even though it's an independent contractor, they're at the moment they're delivering something for Amazon, right? And when if they are like if if the law says amazon is liable it doesn't matter whether you're suing to take advantage of or not if you can if they're liable you can sue right if they uh, the driver caused you harm and you didn't know they happened to drive for amazon at the time but then you find out later and you sue them yes you absolutely can okay. if the driver is legally i mean if amazon is held liable right yes for amazon trucks when they have it is hired small companies to deliver the package but those contractors has to buy the truck the model they provide they just say okay this might you deliver but you buy my uh truck yes and this is the model you're gonna buy from that person and then you can work through so is how that how they work the big trucks the, let's say amazon they're individually owned yes wow okay it's I not, yeah that. it's not amazon it's not Amazon who owns their trucks, like oh, they're, they're, they're individually parts. owned. Yeah, they, they request the third parts to buy their, their trucks. So, hmm. uh, and the contract is made in a way that the Amazon was not liable for the, the, the for anything that happened for that. Um, Did you find that information or? My husband worked. Oh, so he has a truck or? No, but he, he knows. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. He, they, oh, okay. They so they do have it where Amazon would not be liable. Because typically you can't prevent liability by hiring an independent contractor legally. Um, uh, like the, the example I gave with um, the, the house and the contractor hiring a roofer as a subcontractor. Or the other thing, for example, is if you have an elevator in a building. Elevators have to be maintained and, and uh, checked every three months, I think, right? And you, know, you're, you own the building, but you're not an elevator expert, so you hire somebody to do it. If they do something wrong and something goes wrong, the building owner is still liable for any injuries. Yeah. What I, I figure out now that uh, they say they're not liable, but by the law, they are liable. Even they, they say that I, I'm not, I won't be liable. It's your responsibility. So you have to have a, a insurance, a liability insurance. But Amazon is still being liable. But well, the thing is, if you have liability insurance, if the driver has liability insurance, of course the person <laughs> is going to pay first. So I wouldn't say Amazon is lying and is wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't say that. I'm sure they did their due diligence. Okay. I'm sure whatever they're doing is legal. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, there are some other ways. But you know, because insurance is involved too, they are requiring their drivers to have liability insurance. So if something happens, the driver's liability insurance is going to cover that. And they may say, if you don't have, if you fail to have liability insurance, we will not be liable. Some, it could be something like that. We would have to look that up, investigate that further. Maybe you can ask. I have, I work with uh, Amazon in two ways. So my husband uh, uh, have uh, worked uh, for them in the past. And uh, of course they know they are liable, but the amount of time that uh, for to take to decide and make the guilt, they're cashing out, they're making money on top of it. So they don't care because they have 
Even if they are held liable at the end, yeah. yeah. They have to talk and yeah. they can't hold. Yeah. But uh, us, a small, a small business, it's always for the small business. They are, they have a bigger impact. Yeah, they can't afford to file a lawsuit. Sometimes you were you want something else or I don't know. It, just, it sounds like the way that it's phrased is that like it's more letting the contractor know that they're not going to take responsibility for what they did wrong maybe but the consumer could probably the consume, like the consumer the could still find them liability yeah. but like amazon's going to like turn around and like say like hey this is what the contract says now you need to compensate us for everything um like there's no split because like you you're the one providing the equipment you're the one who's maintaining it you're the one who's to keep track of what time and what you're mm -hmm. doing so like it's on yeah own. so but a third party that gets hurt may still I, i'm not sure we would have to really look into that but maybe you can find out since you have a connection to amazon right yeah um if anybody finds out anything let me know and i'll give extra credit between you two especially mike and and my right um i i'm not going to do the class discussion it was something about uber but we're, you know we're we're already running out of time it. here and we already talked enough about that so let's talk about copyright issues work for hire uh, well, when you hire somebody to do some artistic work or work that is copyrighted, you should do a work for hire agreement. If you don't do a work for hire agreement, you're, you don't have copyright to the work that you pay somebody to do for you. So if you ask somebody to, uh, uh, let's see, what, give me an example of when you might hire somebody to do some artistic work for you. Yes. Oh, is there work for an art company? For what? Art company. Art company. So they usually like big companies like Marriott or Hilton just give her the idea and then she draws like a designer work for them. Yes. But even if they don't like the drawing, it's from them. Like she can use it. Yes, that's right. She, if you design a logo or something that a large company hires you to design some artwork for them, uh, and whether the company uses it or not, if they do a work for hire agreement, the artist cannot use it ever for anything else. That's work for hire. If you don't do a work for hire agreement, the artist can reuse it, right? Um, uh, so uh, let's see what we have. Oh, okay, this was about photography. That's, yes, Myra? Yeah, I, I remember the, the case. Old, um, Windows, um, Microsoft. Sure, you know, the, the mountains, the green mountains, the yes, the windows, uh, yeah. the Microsoft Windows, yeah, Microsoft Windows. Uh, that picture, uh, in the, I they bought uh, the picture for a really low price, but they are, because the photographer sells to them and we don't know what they do, they sell the rights after that. That they make them set up a lot of no money because they didn't sell the image, but that the image becomes a really uh, popular. Famous, popular. And uh, the guy tried to get more money out of it, but he did because they, the co agreement was not. So they had a work for hire agreement. Yeah. A very good example. Yeah. So be better than this one here, yeah, actually. So there were, yeah, Windows used the picture and the photographer or whoever created the picture. Uh, try to sue them, not knowing it because probably got very little money for it, and did not knowing how popular it's going to be. But because it was a work for hire agreement, he could not claim royalties on that. Yes, one more. Um, I know that this sometimes is an issue, but like even before you get hired, um, if you are interviewing for a company, sometimes they ask if you real life case studies that they're currently working on. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've heard of cases of like where they use solutions that is presented in by the candidates of the interviews, but they don't hire them. Like, oh, they steal, that's stealing yeah. information. So yeah. like it, but yeah, because when you're an artist, you also provide a portfolio. That would be illegal. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, like, that's highly illegal. Yeah, so it's like sometimes it's like, there's like issues with that. Like sometimes you have to like present work or you have to do like a case study or you have to do like, they give you some materials and you have to present something. Um, and then like those, that presentation, I don't think is, is that, is that? Well, protected? actually, you, uh, you know, you can protect yourself as the, 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 the um, um, individual saying it's copyrighted material and I don't give permission to reuse this. This is only for this presentation. Okay. Yeah. That's if you ever find yourself in a place where they want you to create something for a company and they say, uh, uh, you know, let's say they want to hire somebody in marketing, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
um, uh, what is it, something like a digital arts creator or something like that, right? And and they say, make a sample using our logo and present this or whatever. And you might just apply and make a sample. So if you want them to <coughs> not use it, especially if they don't hire you, right? Then you, you should have a disclaimer. If you just send it in, you could just be a little print on it. Yeah, I would put that if it wasn't there. Anyway, uh, duties of agents and principals. So agents' duties to the principal, so the either independent contractor or employee, they have to provide performance. They have to notify the agent of specific things that, that, are, that the agent should know. Uh, whether there's a, a issues or they have to report, right? Oh, that's actually accounting. I'll go that. But notification of anything that that the uh, the principal should have knowledge of loyalty against fiduciary relationship, obedience. They have to listen to the principal, and then accounting. They have to report back what's happening, and and, and a lot of it is like well, if you're an Uber driver, all that accounting is done automatically the routes you take and all that stuff but if you're a sales uh, an independent salesperson and and there's no real track of what you're selling you have to show what uh, you know you show your transactions and things like that right uh principles duties to the agent what does the company have to do compensation i'm not going to go through that example but basically pay for the work provided right reimbursement and indemnification uh reimbursement it depends right uh if it's an independent contractor, sometimes there's no reimbursement because the independent contractor supplies his or her own supplies and equipment and all that stuff. But in case of an employee, let's say an employee goes to, um, you know, um, drive somewhere for the company, they have to get reimbursed for mileage and things like that, right? Uh, cooperation, they have to cooperate and they have to provide safe working conditions regardless of whether it's an independent contractor or an employee. Liability, we talked already a, little, a lot about liability, but liability for contracts, so authorized acts, disclosed or partially disclosed principles. For example, when you have a home seller or buyer and a real estate agent, right? Um, sometimes the buyer's agent will not necessarily represent the buyer when talking to the seller's agent, things like that, right? Um, so... Um, so that would be sometimes disclosed or partially disclosed. I'm the buyer's agent, but I'm not going to tell you who the agent, who who my who who my buyer is, right? Undisclosed principles. I don't remember that case. Does anybody remember reading that case? When a company typically doesn't disclose the principal, when I'm an agent, you know, sometimes an agent could be another company, right? Um, and when the other company does not disclose that they're actually representing somebody else, they might be liable, right? Um, sometimes that happens in um, when you buy a tour package, like in tourism, right? You buy a tour and the, the, you buy the tour from this tour company and they have transport, uh, they have an airline ticket, they pick you up from the airport. And uh, sometimes whoever picks you up from the airport is not part of the tour company. It's an independent company, right? So uh, does the traveler know that's an independent company or are they part of this company or not? You know, so that's disclosed. That, that's what it means disclosed versus, versus undisclosed. If they have the name of the tour company, you're automatically going to assume that's the tour company. That's not an independent contractor, right? Yeah. But does anybody <coughs> remember what this, this uh, case was? Yes. Uh, so someone bought a car uh, from a dealership shop and um, the person that bought the car dropped the car to his daughter and three days after the car ended its smoking fire under the hood. So he sued like the car dealership company, but they only gave them like a two thousand reduction on the purchase price because it was only two hours after the sale. After the cooling off period, yeah. yeah. And what does it have to do with the disclosed versus undisclosed, that part? Ah, they didn't really explain that. Maybe. Uh, anybody else? Well, I said that the fact that their agency relationship was not made clear to Williams made Pike an undisclosed principal. And, and, and Pike was? Yeah. Pike was the original this... owner of the Car. Okay, so the original owner, so it was a used car. So the okay, so that's and a, Henderson so, sold it. Hmm? 
Henderson sold it. Okay, okay, so um, uh, yes, so there was really, um, so it wasn't disclosed that uh, that the person was selling the car for Pike, that there was an undisclosed agent. And Williams could thus hold Pike and Henderson liable for the condition of the car. Okay, so in that case, <laughs> both could be held liable. Because, because it, it seemed like you were just dealing with one party. So it, it was, I think it was Henderson's business sold Pike's car for him. Okay. So probably for like a commission or something. Thank you for looking that up. I'm going to go on. Uh, just quickly, liability for torts and crimes agents typically, I mean, principals are typically liable for torts and crimes committed in an agency relationship, provided it happened on the job or while working for them. Anything that happens afterwards doesn't matter, right? Um, you have to look at the um, uh, scope of employment. Did it happen in the scope of employment, right? If it's an employer-employee relationship, was the employer at work or was it during work hours or was the employee in the uh, engaged in doing work for the company at the moment something was committed? That's what they look at, right? Um, employee travel time, usually when you go, uh, uh, you know, when you're driving around as a salesperson, for example, um, you're driving to another client, uh, the principal is responsible for anything that you can cause, right? During the travel time from one client to another. But once you're done with your job and you're going home, that's it. You're on your way home, the agent would not be um, uh, responsible. Of course, notice of dangerous conditions ha have to be given. Uh, notices have to be given on both sides. Yeah. Um, liability for agents intentional tort. You know, we do see things when we hear things, dramatic things, when employers, I mean, employees, get upset and they come to the workplace with a gun and shoot co-workers. Yeah. Is the employer responsible? It depends. It depends on the environment the employer created, the safety and security. Should the employer have known about this? Should the employer have taken uh, 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 other steps? Right? Uh, it depends. But in a lot of times, yes, they could be held liable. Right. Same with crimes. Right. Um, okay, that's it for this chapter. Let me just stop this the recording.